The Eurasian curlew is the only curlew that breeds in the UK, but the species is both nationally and internationally threatened. In the UK, the curlew population has halved in 25 years and urgent work is needed to save these birds from extinction. Monitoring breeding birds involves surveying adult breeding numbers and detailed nest monitoring. This film, commissioned by the Curly Country Project and the British Trust for Ornithology, shows the behaviour of the curlew through the breeding season. It details specific behaviours as the birds arrive in the spring, establish territories, make nests, incubate eggs and rear chicks. The behaviour illustrated in this film is intended to help farmers and conservationists involved with curly recovery work by identifying key stages in the breeding cycle. It should of course be stressed that any work with curlews which may disturb the birds, even for a short time, must be done by a suitably experienced person licensed to monitor wild bird nests. Any unusual activity can disturb the birds. All the behaviour described in the film can be seen from a good vantage point, such as the top of a hill or from a car parked at a suitable distance. In winter, curlews spend most of their time at estuarine or coastal roosts, or on wetlands. However, in spring they start to head inland to return to their breeding territories. The adults are relatively faithful in both wintering and breeding locations. Shropshire in the Welsh Marches holds one of the more extensive lowland curlew populations. Here the birds breed in hay meadows and rough grassland. Curlew arrive on the breeding grounds in early spring. At this stage of the season they appear relaxed and concentrate primarily on feeding. They are also very vocal and appear to be aware of other birds calling. This is all to do with establishing their own territory and recognising neighbouring territories. They are also very tolerant of other animals. Jackdaws and other corvids like crows, magpies and ravens would elicit a very different response once the birds are nesting, but at this stage of the season they are not a threat to the curlew. It's the same with sheep and other livestock. If they are not near a nest they pose no threat and curlew will feed alongside them with no sign of alarm or agitation. Compare this relaxed attitude with their reaction to a sheep approaching a nest with eggs, a behaviour which we'll see later in this film. The birds are often seen in pairs prior to establishing territories. Seeing two birds together may mean that the birds are a pair and may be on their territory but they may not necessarily be near where they are actually going to nest, often preferring to feed some distance from where they breed. These two nested several fields away, on the field nearest the moorland. During this early season phase, the birds will not only establish territories, but will also start to mate. It's always worth watching a pair for an extended period, if possible, and you may see them mate. Mating starts with the male following the female and pecking at her tail feathers. The female will walk away and the male will follow. Eventually the female bird will pause more often and the male will start flapping his wings and pecking more vigorously. Once the female stands still, the male will increase the intensity of pecking and wing flapping and will finally be allowed to mount the female. He then spends some time perched on the back of the female, paddling his legs in her back until she is finally ready to mate.
once mating has occurred, the birds may stand and preen before continuing with normal feeding activities. When the birds are standing still, you can clearly see that the female, on the right here, is significantly bigger and has a longer bill. As the season progresses, the birds become more territorial, defending their space from potential threats, including predators. These birds were determined to chase off a crow which was feeding in their territory. In fact, this action took place very near where they ended up nesting, so they were clearly letting the crow know that it was not welcome in the area. When searching for a nest site, the birds look for grass that is high enough to disguise their presence, but short enough that they can keep an eye on their surroundings. This is an example of the kind of fields where curlews nest in Shropshire. In these meadows it's very hard to find nests because there are no distinguishing features anywhere within the field. To make matters more difficult, the nests are simple depressions in the grass which are not easy to identify until you get close to them. They create these shallow cups in the grass by swivelling on their haunches. If the grass is not too long, it may be possible to observe the bird on its nest. In this case, the bird is nesting in a clump of rushes in a heavily grazed field and is unusually conspicuous. There is significant variation in egg lay dates around the country, but most birds will have a first egg in the nest by the beginning of May at the latest. Once the bird stands up, you would not necessarily know that it's at the nest without a couple of telltale signs. Initially the bird just stands quite still and preens at the nest site. This in itself is an indication that there might be something special about this particular place. But then there are a couple of other behaviours that it shows which indicate the presence of a nest. Firstly, the bird is seen throwing pieces of grass over its shoulder. This behaviour is used to lightly cover eggs with pieces of grass to break up their outline and disguise them from aerial predators like crows. The bird is also making soft calls like a low whistle this may be alerting the partner to the fact that it is off the nest. It may even be calling to the developing chicks. The longer you can spend watching, the more information you are likely to come away with. Finding a nest is a key objective in managing these populations, as it allows protective measures to be installed. Without the precise location of the nest, it's very hard to help these birds. As I was watching this nesting curlew from my vehicle, a large lorry came along the road and disturbed it. Having left the nest, it went and lurked near a patch of rushes, staying alert but also taking the opportunity to feed.
Gradually, as it decided that the threat had passed, the bird started heading back towards the nest, taking its time and keeping an eye on nearby sheep. It didn't go directly to the nest but circled warily before finally settling back onto the eggs. Once again, if you see a bird acting furtively or secretively, then it pays to keep watching for a while to see if it might be nesting. When nests fail, either through predation of the eggs or disturbance by stock, the birds will often make a second attempt at breeding. This will usually be in the same area as the first nest, so it is worth monitoring pairs that are known to have failed to see if they show signs of breeding again. Curlew nests can be established in a variety of habitats. This nest is in rough grassland, an area regularly used by foxes to hunt for voles. This fox quartered the field in its search for food. Eventually the curlew became alarmed and left its nest. It walked and then ran directly away from the nest, a clear indication of where to watch on a future visit. Note that as the bird takes off, it makes a very distinctive alarm call, which it continues as it flies around the territory. Curlews have a wide range of calls. These can be very distinctive and may give clues to what the birds are doing. The classic bubbling call is made when the birds arrive in the spring and is used to establish and identify territories. This call is heard throughout the breeding season, often as the birds fly over the territory or come into land. There are also a range of alarm calls, from a simple two-tone alarm to a more frantic yakkering call. These calls may be made by birds on the ground, but are more often heard when birds have taken flight and are flying around over the nest or their chicks. Even if you have found a nest, it's well worth monitoring the behaviour of the birds during incubation to check that everything is progressing positively. Curly have often nested in these fields and a lengthy watch on the nest site revealed an incubation changeover. Here the incubating bird can be seen in the middle of the picture. The bird is standing next to the nest and placing pieces of grass onto the eggs, behaviour we've seen before. As the camera pans right, you can see the partner bird appearing on the far right of the image and walking towards the nest. When returning to the nest, the birds are particularly wary, landing some distance from the nest and then taking an indirect route through the long grass to reach the nest. This behaviour is designed to confuse any watching predator. The birds pass, hardly interacting at all, and the incoming bird settles on the nest. The outgoing bird disappears temporarily but can then be seen on the right side of the frame, initially checking for threats and then finally taking off. Note that the bird takes off from very close to the nest. 
We have also recorded this behaviour from a very different perspective by using a nest cam. The incoming bird arrives top centre and the birds call to each other. This alerts the sitting bird that the incoming bird has arrived and is ready to take over incubation. The bird on the nest starts to look around and get ready to leave. It finally stands up and leaves the nest, ready for the incoming bird to take over. Here you can see the eggs clearly as the bird stands up. As the bird leaves the nest you can start to see the incoming bird appear through the grasses on the left of the nest. The birds cross and the incoming bird settles on the nest. As the incoming bird settles, you can see and hear the outgoing bird take off in the upper left hand corner of the screen. The bird on the nest makes a few low volume calls as it settles on the eggs and starts its incubation shift. Curlews in Shropshire and the Welsh Marches nest on farmland and frequently encounter livestock with whom they share the fields. Their reaction to livestock can sometimes indicate the presence of a nest. A nest in these fields was ring fenced with an electric fence which protected the nest from grazing stock. However, the curlews still worked hard to ensure that disturbance was minimised. While one bird incubated, the other kept watch nearby occasionally summoning the incubating bird to join it. The birds very quickly became used to the fence, flying over it to access the nest. The curly regarded sheep as a threat and made every effort to distract them from going near the nest. Compare this behaviour with their reaction to sheep earlier in the season, when they appeared to be completely relaxed about them. The guard bird here is trying to lead the sheep away from the nest site. This individual clearly feels that it will have more success with the inquisitive and naive lambs, rather than the older ewes. It makes mock attacks on the lamb, inviting a response and then moving in the opposite direction to that of the nest. This draws the lamb away from the nest as it is curious about the curlew or simply irritated by it. Either way, it is a very useful indication of where the nest is situated. In this case, the location of the nest is obviously identified by the electric fencing but this will not be the case when you suspect the presence of a new nest.
It is no surprise that curlews try to prevent sheep from coming near the nest. They don't just pose a threat from trampling, they also predate eggs as can be seen in this image captured on a nest cam. Curlews clearly know when they have met their match. Cows are not so easily distracted, so although Curlew will keep an eye on them, they seem to know that cows won't fall for simple distraction techniques. Once again, we can use the nest cam footage to see the bird's reaction to nearby cattle. A cow can be seen in the top left corner of the image, and the bird is clearly aware of its presence, finally moving away from the nest. The curlew makes a number of short, sharp alarm calls as the cow moves around the site, before returning via a different route to the nest. Throughout the Curlew Country project, nests have been monitored for eggs and chicks. Once the chicks hatch, they are tagged with radio tags so that their progress and location can be monitored. Timing is critical here because within 36 hours the chicks will have moved away from the nest and may be impossible to find. Once the chicks have hatched, they are immediately mobile. This presents the adults with a problem. They need to look after the chicks still in the nest, but also need to keep an eye on any chick which has decided to go in search of food. The chicks are entirely self-supporting, looking for food from shortly after they hatch. These meadows are rich in small invertebrates, which are a main source of food for the young chicks. This chick has clearly found the ideal vantage point from which to check the surrounding vegetation for food. We filmed some of this video in North Yorkshire, where curlews nest on upland moors and surrounding farmland. This is a grouse moor, and as such has significantly more predator control than lowland areas. The curlew population, and that of other ground nesting birds like lapwing and snipe, is thriving. Surprisingly the birds appear to nest much earlier here despite being at high altitudes and further north. In this sequence, the parent bird can be seen perched on the stone wall to the far right of the picture. This position gives it a much better view of the surrounding area and almost certainly means that there are chicks nearby. In fact, it's the only circumstance in which they will be seen on a raised lookout like this. The chicks can be seen in the rough grassland below the wall. These chicks are highly mobile and although they're only a couple of weeks old, they are already independent.
This presents the parents with a problem as they try to keep an eye on all of the chicks at once. Using the wall as a viewing point helps, but once the chicks have moved too far away, the adult flies down to join them. On managed moorlands and reserves, populations are thriving, but in other areas, curlews are in trouble. In 2017, the Curlew Country Project recorded chicks fledging in Shropshire for the first time in many years. This achievement was only possible through the combined efforts of farmers, professional field workers and volunteer bird watchers. Your enthusiasm for curly conservation can really make a difference. If you see a curlew outside the area in which you are undertaking structured curly recovery work, please report it to the British Trust for Ornithology or Curly Country. Thank you.